Oh, I hear dripping. Yeah. Oh, it's not uh, smaller stuff to get it going. Yeah. It's on a bit of an angle, like this is all uh, yeah. five more. Yeah, let me bring that here. You want me to throw it? Aren't you too tired?
Kelly. I didn't even see you hiding there. I have to throw it for you again. <laughs> My knocks are too loose. I just dip them in some hot water. Very, very briefly. In this case, maple syrup. Squeeze that slightly tighter and hold it for a second to cool. What are you doing there? be after 6.30. Now it's since, what, 8? No. Before that, 7 o'clock this morning. Long, tiring day. Especially because I didn't have the firewood prepared. All the good quality firewood's been used for heat and cooking this winter in the cabin. So all I have is all the scrap, dead standing stuff. Oh, scrap dead standing stuff that I'm cutting down around the workshop where it's close to here rather than the cabin so I can use it close to where I harvest it but that means physically splitting it all in an axe all day literally all day so between that and shooting my bow <laughs> I'm pretty tired I can barely talk it <laughs> oh. but so rewarding I gotta say I can never take this life for granted. The things I'm able to do, the life I'm able to li live, a lot of time I get to spend outdoors doing stuff that I've either always loved doing or always wanted to do. Living just a more traditional life. Life way more outdoor based than indoor. And in the Canadian Shield, it's always been, I've been a, drawn to the Canadian Shield this uh, Precambrian Shield country since I was a kid just from the odd camping trip that my family did up north and it's uh, it's harsh it's not very um, easy to live in it's not good for growing stuff the wildlife is fewer and further between than in agricultural areas or flatter areas but I don't know it's just something about it that just draws me it just feels a lot more wild this is one of the things you do to to uh, produce food out of the out of the forest. But this small maple grove that I've got here of uh, sugar maples, and it is pretty small. I guess what do I have here of maple, probably four acres, maybe a mixed forest that has a lot of maple, a lot of oak, and other species too. For Lots of beach that's dying, you know, all the saplings are coming up, so there's lots of those. Anyway, I love this forest. I love this life that I'm living. And even though it's extremely hard work, very tiring, it's very rewarding. So this camera, <laughs> the battery's going to die, but it's just going to be, no, I don't even have a light on it right now. So I won't be able to film, so I'm going to turn this off in a bit. I might not get this boil but I'll stay at it uh, into the night probably 10 o'clock ish I would think before I get this down to the point where I can empty the last bit of that more dilute stuff into this one that's going to be the final and if I don't get it to the point I won't get it to the point tonight tomorrow morning I'll get that down to the thickness that I need for syrup and that probably looks like I'm going to get 10 liters which is what four two and a half gallons um, 
of sap after all day of burning and using up all this fuel. But it's spring, it's a nice thing to do, nice excuse to spend the day outside. But um, like I said, I think I'll finish it off probably in the morning. I'll give an update, I'll do an update video just showing how much we've produced in total for the season and who else is going to help me out maybe on the next burn. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Good night.